make a disclaimer. I'm not in any way related to Windows, as Windows is not an open source <laughs> system. It's actually a company. Um, but the objective of tonight, so why, why did I propose this session? Because uh, by teaching in, in um, Carpentry's uh, workshops, I've seen that there is a strong focus on Linux and, and Mac, as Mac uses the same uh, system. And Windows, it, it's a bit neglected, I, I believe. And, and I know by experience, I mean, I, I use it for work and I know that it has uh, possibilities. It has some good features and, and I believe it's good to know them and try to make use of them the, the best way we can. I mean, I know from experience that many universities, many departments, many teams uh, have Windows and not Linux, and many people are much more familiar with Windows than Linux. So um, that's why I, I would like to share what I know. I'm not an expert. I, I know something because I needed to learn them for, for uh, my job. And, and, and uh, I, I, maybe I forgot to mention, I'm a postdoctoral researcher in um, solid mechanics, computational solid mechanics. So my main job is doing simulations of materials. And that's why the programming is a, a very big part of my uh, daily work. So the first thing I'd like you to do is actually go to the pad and around line 45, there is a section I called opening and there are two questions there and I see you're already answering. So if you can just put a plus one. Uh, so the first one is which system you use at work and at home. And the second one, try to rate your proficiency, both in the Windows command prompt and uh, with the bash shell, because I, I would like to know also about bash shell as a comparison. So if I'm talking to someone proficient in that or not. So I think, yeah, everyone has answered. Okay, so there are, <laughs> there are a few Mac users, <laughs> but good. So the idea of tonight is to try to work together on, uh, on the common prompt. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and uh, we'll try to code together pretty much as in, in a classic carpentry workshop. Uh, and I see that, okay, everyone rates itself at one. Uh, no, some basic comments, okay. So I think I'm gonna go, try to go fast on that. And best shell, I see, I see people more proficient than I am, three and two. Okay, good. So um, let's start. I'll start sharing my screen here. Okay, so now you can see my home page, very Windowsy and very full of icons. So the first thing I want to start with, uh, this is actually something I thought about uh, while preparing this session. Um, lately, Windows has added a lot of new tools, the so-called uh, Linux subsystems. So the first thing I want to show you what you can do with Windows, even if you want to work with Linux. And then afterwards, we're gonna dive in the common prompt. So uh, from the carpentry lessons, we know that, for example, we can use Git bash as a Linux subsystem. And actually there is a lesson based on that and quite powerful. And the uh, Git bash works as a program in Windows. This means that from the uh, git bash, you can access the Windows folder system. So if I say ls, now I see the list of folders and files is actually the home folder of the git bash, which is actually, you can see it here. Maybe I can use a red. you can see it here, is actually a folder in the C drive. So the git bash behaves, behaves like 
it, it, it actually is a program in Windows. So it sees the Windows subsystem. It sees the Windows folder and you can navigate in the Windows folder as much as with the uh, Windows Explorer. Now, these are pros and cons. So the pro is that you can access the same file from your Windows programs and from Git Bash. On the other hand, uh, there are problems with compatibility of programs. Sometimes it happens, it has happened in workshop. I've seen that um, there are programs which if you try to install uh, Linux programs in the Git Bash, you might have problems because it's not actually a full featured Linux, Linux system or Linux subsystem that is actually a program. It's an emulator. So well, actually, Microsoft proposed lately, and lately I mean, I, I think I'm talking about the last couple of years, uh, if I'm not wrong, are these so-called uh, subsystems. And there is actually, so I'm gonna start, I'll show you the icons. First, there is an Ubuntu subsystem, there is an open SUSE, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, subsystem and there is also a Kali Linux subsystem and how do they work so let's open the Ubuntu one give it a minute that it loads so it actually behaves as a shell in Linux so you open this Ubuntu subsystem and what you're opening is a, is a Linux shell now this Linux shell now is not seeing the Windows uh, folders. If I ask for ls, I'm somewhere else. And the most interesting thing is that if I ask for the parent folder, home, and one more again, the root, you can see that now we are seeing a folder system that is actually the Linux one, not the Windows one. You see that we are in the root and we have the folders that are typical of a Linux system, being boot, dev, etc., home, and so on. Why? And, and we cannot see, notice that we cannot see the drive, we cannot see C differently from the Git bash that we have seen previously. Why? Luca, can, can you make the font larger? Uh, sure, and the trick was, Better? Yeah, that's better. Thank you. Yeah. And um, so, what, what what is this thing now? So this is actually pretty much a virtual machine. So that what these subsystems are. These are virtual machines um, that work natively in Windows. So they they've been built to work natively in Windows, so smoothly in Windows, without installing um, a virtual machine um, runner and then installing the virtual machine in that. I don't know if you have experience in that. I've done that a, a bit and it's a, quite cumbersome to do that. Uh, and I'm going to show you where you can find these subsystems. And they actually, they are free. So. Uh, these are very, very powerful tools. And they come uh, with the basic Ubuntu installation. So when you open this system here, you get what you would get installing Ubuntu on your computer. Uh, so the pro is that you get a full feature, full featured Ubuntu installation without many hassles in installing it. Uh, the main drawback is that you cannot access the Windows folders. So it is for the uh, practical life when you need to code, you're actually working on a different computer at the end of the day. So for example, if you want to work with Git, you need to, you, you need to clone your folders if you need to work from your Git folder, both in Windows and from the Ubuntu subsystem, you need to download it twice, once for Windows in a Windows folder, and then once again for Ubuntu, for the Ubuntu subsystem in the uh, subfolders that the Ubuntu subsystem can see. Okay. 
and the same applies for the other two. So OpenSUSE, Kali Linux, uh, they offer, they are different uh, Linux distributions, they offer different functionalities and they work the same uh, as the Ubuntu subsystem. There is also another option and this is the terminal, which is again another uh, relatively new program by Windows, again free for Windows users. And the interesting thing is that the terminal is, um, within a minute, because, okay, uh, the terminal is, as, as the, name, the name suggests, a terminal, but the powerful thing is that you can use different backends. So the default one that opens up is the Windows PowerShell. But you can use the command prompt, so uh, Windows again, but also Ubuntu. And also, I'm gonna not I'm, I'm not gonna use it because I, I, I didn't actually install that. I don't have a working account on Azure, but you can actually use, uh, communicate with your uh, account in the cloud from here, obviously on the Microsoft cloud. So this, this is another very powerful tool offered for free. How can you get them? Well, you can just go to the store. So you go to the search bar, you can just write store in it. And the first uh, result should be the Microsoft Store app. And we can open it. So the loading time should give you the time to do what I'm doing. And then, sorry, but all, all these software, the Windows, the, the Windows softwares, um, they all come with the system default language and my default language is Italian. So you're gonna see uh, some words in Italian, but hopefully that's not gonna be a problem. Here on the upper right corner, there is the uh, search bar and here you can write terminal for the terminal that we've just seen. And the first result is the Windows terminal. Now, if you want the Ubuntu subsystem, you can write, well, you can just write Ubuntu and you see that you have first three suggestions are actually about Ubuntu. Actually, you can see that I have the previous version. There is already the 20.04 version available. Let's check that out. If you click on that, you are prompted with this window and you can see it's free. And then you can just click on download it, have it. I'm not sure what in, in uh, the, the the English version of this page uh, says. Uh, you can just click on it and the Microsoft Store application will download and install the Ubuntu subsystem automatically with almost to none interaction from you. So you just need to say okay and then you'll get your Ubuntu installation on your Windows computer. So, and if you prefer Kali Linux, you can just type Kali Linux. And there you go. You get your, or you can install your Kali Linux again, free or open SUSE. And you get, again, here, there is a couple of version available and same trick. I've already installed it, you can uh, say install it and you get it on your Windows computer. So this is for the initial intro to the tools that Windows now offer. So I, I, I believe this is really uh, recent as I, as I said, it's the last two, three years with the release of Windows 10. 
and uh, I believe this has made Windows much more powerful than before. Now, for the common prompt, how I, I believe most of you, if not all of you, uh, know uh, how, how to open the common prompt. But I'm going to start from that. Okay, so please, if, if you know that, just uh, be patient. <laughs> so if you don't have the common prompt on your um, bar here or in your start menu, which is usually the case if you don't use it, you can just go to the search bar and write common prompt. Um, I have more than one actually here. Let's see. Ah. It's actually, so if you write in, in if you have an English based uh, computer, you can just write common prompt. I have an Italian uh, based system, so I need to write uh, the Italian version. But that's where you can find your common prompt on your Windows system. So you look for it, you can just select open it and we are prompt with this screen again as same thing as in the uh, bash shell the command prompt starts in the home folder so in windows the home folder is usually the user folder which means that if you have even if it's not shared your, the home folder from the command prompt is going to be in C or the main drive, then uh, slash users, and then slash your login name. So in this case, C users Luca D, my login name on this laptop, although this is my personal laptop. So, and this is the how the common prompt appears. So, let, let's say that we we don't know thing about the common prompt what we can do we can try to write help well the, 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 the first thing to do when you are in in a difficult situation ask for help so I'm gonna increase the size so let's see again I just wrote help and what we get again uh, sorry for that. The common prompt is going to use the language, the system language, so the default system language. Uh, in this case, it's Italian, but if you run the command on your computer, it's going to be English, uh, I assume, or your default system language. And here you have a list of all the main comments that you can uh, run in the common prompt. I can highlight a few of them. Call to run uh, functions and batch files. CD for change directory. CHD for again change directory. Um, copy, date, del, dir. These are basic uh, comments. Uh, echo, find, find string, for, and many others. So you have a list of all of them, and as you can see, a basic description, a one liner uh, telling you what they do. Maybe you have noticed that many names are similar to the names in Best Shell. CD is the there is really the, the, the classic example it's really the same syntax standing for the same function change the directory so that that makes it easier to learn the windows common prompt if you know already best shell the way it works also it's not exactly the same but very very similar and so that that gives people that know um, best shell an advantage now, but now let's say that we, we start working with this common prompt. And let's say that somehow 
we know that CD is a function, is a command, but we don't, we don't know exactly uh, how to use it. Well, all Windows uh, command prompt commands have the option slash question mark, and that's the help. So if you write common name slash question mark, you get the help of the function. And in this case, uh, CD stands for change directory, but also it fulfills the function that PWD uh, fulfills in uh, mesh shell. Let's see. If I write only CD, I get the current working directory. So if I said instead CD double dot, again, bash shell syntax, I go to the parent directory. If I say CD Luca D, I move to the child Luca D. If I say, let's go back to the parent. So, and, and right now, as you see, you, you can play with, with the command prompt open on your computer. Uh, the command prompt uh, should have opened in your uh, home folder, so you can just play around with the parent of your home folder and back. We go back to the parent folder, and now we can try, should work. Uh, let's say that we remember more or less the name of the folder. We remember that it's something, the first name plus something. Well, this plus something, we can represent it with a wildcard star, which is the same, it works exactly the same as in Bash Shell. So, the wildcard star stands for an arbitrary number of characters, any number of characters, any type of characters. So that could be CD, Luca, and whatever else. Clearly here, I knew that the first four letters were enough to determine the folder, and Windows knew as well, so it went in the correct folder. So, and, as you might have guessed, I'm introducing wildcards. So let's say that you remember that actually the name is this is something like that, but you re, you don't remember the uh, say the third character. So you know that it's actually uh, four characters long, but you you don't remember the third. It, it worked. Ah, sorry. It didn't work because it was already in the folder I wanted to enter. <laughs> My bad. So, there you go. So, as in Bash Shell, the wildcard question mark stands for an arbitrary character, but just one character. Now, Let's say that, let's start to add something more. How can I see folders? How can I see the content of the folder? If I, need, if I have to navigate the folder, I need to uh, know the content. That's the function dear, which I think some of you already know. Let's ask for the help again. And please run it on your computer. So the dear function has a few options and you can specify different um, attributes of the files. Uh, you can select different visualizations. You have a bunch of options. You have the possibility of sort them, which is uh, should be, I don't find it, 
sorry guys. O, there you go, slash O, to sort them. Let's try it out. So if we just write deer, we get this list of files. So what we get as a default is the uh, disk in which we are working. So in this case, disk C. We have also the number, the series number of the disk then the directory, the, the local directory right now. So C users look at D. And then we have this list of files and folders uh, with the timestamp, so date, time of the last modification. Then we have the string dear if the entry is a directory, the folder. And then we have dot for the current directory, double dot for the parent directory, and then we have dot name for the um, hidden folders. So as you can see, the first two dot and double dot, they are the same as in the bash shell. So dot stands for the current directory, double dot stands for the parent directory. Then there are the hidden folders and these are uh, typical of Windows. And these are the folders that if you use the Windows Explorer, you need to go in the options and switch their visualization on. And then if you move down, you get all your files and folders listed. Now, let's say we want to create a folder here. That's the make dear function. MKDeer, and as you can see, the syntax is the same as in Bash Shell again. Let's again ask for the help. Um, creates a directory, and you have different options again. You can navigate them. Let's play with it. So let's create a folder called session uh, CH2020 for session carpentry at home 2020. Now, we have no output. It shouldn't scare us. We can run a dear command again, and we can see that towards the end we get this session CH2020. So the comment was actually successful. However, we should be able to locate the folder by using also the command where. So I believe the name was this, where session CH2020. Ah, it's right. I've asked for the folder, but where the default behavior of where is for files. So I need to check the help of the where function to see uh, how I can get the location of a folder if I can. I can't. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, guys. With the where function, we're gonna run another example with that a bit later, just in a minute. Uh, what we can do, if I remember, is actually using the dear command. Let me try. Yes. So, if you want to locate a folder, you can, so you are in uh, some current folder. Right now we are in the home folder. And you want to check that there is a folder in that, a specific one. You can run dear with the folder name and that Windows, the Windows command prompt is able to tell you if the folder is there or not. 
you can see it here. Actually, it is there. Now, let's enter this folder, session CH 2020. We can run it here. There is nothing. There are only two directories, home, uh, current directory and parent folder, and no files. Now, how can we create a file for the common prompt? Actually, the Windows common prompt lacks a functionality like touch in Bash shell or uh, Beam or Nano, so an inline, in-terminal editor, but we can call the notepad, which is the Windows equivalent of Beam or Nano, so the, the native text editor. If we call notepad and we create, we assign a file name that doesn't exist. So for example, notepad session dot txt. Actually, let's call it section examples dot txt. So just to be clear, there is no file in this directory. So I'm, I'm really providing a file name that doesn't exist. So notepad session examples.txt and then I press enter. I, uh, let me, there we go, yeah. Now you should see, I'm gonna move the notepad also, but if, if you run the command, what should have happened is that here the command was entered in the command prompt, no output was given, but the notepad was opened and you should have got this window here saying the file, uh, I couldn't find the file, should I create a new one? And you can just say yes. And then you have your file created and you can check in the comment prompt. If you run here, now you should be able to see section examples.txt with size of zero zero bytes because we haven't written anything and in your notepad you can actually edit this file so for the time being let's close it and let's try out the comment that was mentioning before where so you know a file, you're interested in finding a file, you don't, you don't remember where it is, you can run the where function. So where session examples.txt. Well, now the search, this search is pretty simple for Windows because we are asking for a file that is in the current directory, so it's quite fast. What we are, what we got is the location starting from the drive. So from C up to the file, we get the full file path. Now let's try it out the same function from the parent, the, the, the grand grand parent. So that it should allow us also to play a bit with file path. So if I want to go to users, I can use cd double dot slash uh, double dot and that's it and i'm in users so as you can see as as much as in the uh, bash shell you, you can combine the double dots notice uh, notice that i forgot to mention you can type using the normal slash even if the Windows command prompt and Windows in general uses the backslash. So it is actually agnostic with respect to which one you use. You can use both of them and it, it will not matter. So use the one that it, that's easier for you on your keyboard. For me, for example, it's easier to use slash and also it's 
a matter of uh, habit, as I code a lot in Python and I've been using more the bash shell, it comes uh, easier to use that. So now we are in the gra so grandparent of the folder in which we were. And let's ask again for where that file is. Now, let's say that we are lazy and we don't want to type again the, uh, the previous call to the where command. What can we do? We can use the arrows. So if you use the up arrow, you can navigate through the history of the command prompt, pretty much as in the bash shell. So up arrow, you move back in time. Uh, down arrow, you come back to the present time. So right now what I'm doing is pl playing with the arrows up and down and I'm looking for this command here, where session examples.txt. I run it, pressing enter, and it's not able to locate that. Okay, fair enough. Uh, we are too far from the, uh, we are not in the, let's see if we can use a wildcard here to make it work. It's not working, okay. But what I want to, sh to, to show you actually is, is not the word command. Um, we can check the, the help later. What I want to show you is another uh, command to access the history. And that's actually, I hope I remember correctly, F7. So if you press F7 on your keyboard, you are prompted with this window here. And this is actually your history, your common prompt history. So again, F7. And you can navigate it with the up and down arrow. So now let's say that I want to run a dear command. You can just go on the dear command and press enter on it. And it's run. There is also another way to access the history, and that's DOS key. Let's ask for the help. So I suggest you ask for the help of this function. So DOS key is a very powerful function because it's actually um, linked to macros. You can uh, edit macros with that but we can also just use it to access the history. And that's the option history here. Or also, we're gonna see, and also I'm gonna highlight for you, again, it's in Italian, but if you check on your computer, you're gonna get in your uh, language, I believe English, uh, how to access what, what I've just said, basically, up and down arrow, um, F7, um, and then we're going to see also F8 and F9. Now, DOS key slash history. We get a nice list of all the comments we, we run today. What happens if I write history with capital letters? Nothing actually. So the common prompt is um, agnostic with respect to capital letters. You can write in, in uh, small letters, capital letters, it, it doesn't matter. You can write C, you can write, well actually run a deer. You can write deer or dear, so capital letters or not, or small case, and it doesn't matter. The output is the same, the common code is the same. Well, and, and you can call the those key history option also just writing H, so those key uh, slash H. 
we get the output. Now, if we remember only part of our common code, let's say that we remember DOS and then we don't remember anymore. If we press F8, we get the auto completion. So let's do it again. I'm deleting. I remember that what I want to run starts with DOS, D O S, but I don't remember the rest. I press F8 and I get a suggestion. If I press again, I get another suggestion. If I press again, I get a further suggestion. The one that I like, I can press enter and use it. Finally, there is another option. I remember, let's, let's press again F7. I see, for example, that 30, and by the way, you can interact, you, sorry, you can interact with this uh, prompt here with the arrows, and I select gear. Now, I remember that command 29 is again a deer function and I want to run it. I can press F9 and I, I, I'm asked for the number of the command and the number here is the number in the history list. So I run, I write here 29, hopefully I remember correctly, and I get the deer command written. Uh, to the input, and then I can run it. So let's move back to our our session folder. So here again, we can uh, move directly to that folder. We can do cd look at the so your uh, username slash session. I don't remember exactly the name, so I'm going to use a wildcard, and I hope session is enough to identify the folder. Let's see. It is. So I'm, I moved directly uh, in that folder. And now, let's say that I want to save the history. Well, there are two ways, actually. One uh, more effective than the other. So one way is, for example, you can just ask for those key slash h. And then you can just select with your mouse the output. Scrolling down, I'm just working with the mouse. You select everything. You press enter. And then let's open again our file. So let's ask again for notepad, session examples dot txt. You can go to your file and just paste. So what I did here was right clicking in notepad and selecting paste. And you get your history written to file. So this is a way you can copy and paste to and from the Windows command prompt. The other way, oh, sorry. which is if you want a bit more techy or jokes apart, a bit more effective, but a bit more time saving, it's calling those key option H and then using a pipe. There are actually pipes also in Windows, in the Windows command prompt. So in this case, I'm gonna use uh, the greater than symbol. Uh, I'm gonna assign a new file name. I'm gonna say session history.txt. I'm gonna press enter. I don't have any output. I can check the existence of this existence of this file with the where command. It's there, it has been created. And I can open it and notice that here I use the up arrow to navigate the history. I can open this file with a notepad. 
and as you can see, we have opened the session history and we have all the history written file. Now, now you might have noticed that the syntax is similar to bash shell, so you might already expect what I'm going to show you. I'm gonna navigate the history with the up arrow, select the uh, command that I run to save the history to file, I run it again as it is, and let's open again the file. And as you can see, so the first command was help, and the last one does key option H. As you can see, we have uh, overwritten the file. So the single pipe here, the single greater than, single arrow symbol is uh, write the output to file instead than writing it to screen and overwrite if the file already exists. Now, what happens if I want to append? You might expect those that are that those that know Bash Shell might expect what I'm gonna say. So right now I'm navigating the history, trying to find this line here, and I'm gonna write this comment here. Let's see. The comment was successful. No error was printed to screen. I'm gonna open the file again with the notepad. And so the first comment was help, but if you scroll down somewhere, what happened here? Ah, sorry, I opened the wrong file, that's why. There you go. Things we're not checking out. Notepad session history. There you go. Help, first comment, and then help again here. So I'm gonna. Well. I'm not gonna lose time changing the character. This is really very quick. So first line help, and again it is repeated. So what we did is we appended the content, the second, the content of the second comment to the file. And people who know Batch Shell will recognize the same syntax. Now um, Let's let's start try it out. Something a bit more advanced. Or let's let's try to do for loops and if structures. So mm, Let's open again our session examples .txt file. Now we can delete all the content, and now I'm gonna need to change the the format. Um, I'm gonna ask for 38, let's see. Maybe, is it good? Yes, it's very large, but I think it's good. <laughs> okay, <laughs> perfect. Um, and we're gonna write. Uh, just, just to let you know, uh, it's one hour in, so it's uh, half an hour uh, to go. Thank you. So let's start writing, follow me, and then I, I'll explain the, uh, the comment. Oh, actually, no, uh, 
I made an error, sorry. We need to close this file and actually create a new one. Let's call notepad and let's call notepad session script 01 dot cmd. I'm sorry, I forgot. So the, the extension of a script file for the command prompt is a cmd or also bat, batch file. Now, uh, both will work in the same way, but it's better to use .cmd, .common, uh, because Windows C sees .bat files as uh, program files, as execution files, uh, much like .exe files. So, the usually the anti antivirus and firewalls are gonna be suspicious of, of .bat files, uh, which means they might not run correctly and probably not for a fault of your own. They're not gonna run because Windows is gonna prevent them to run. So it's better to use the .cmd file because Windows will see this .cmd file as just a list of comments for the command prompt. Okay, so the content might be the same, uh, it's, it's just what Windows is seeing. Uh, so let's use the .cmd uh, extension. So notepad session script 01.cmd. Again, do I, do I want to create a new file? Yes, I want. Now, I'm gonna write first thing, echo off. Now, echo is the uh, function, the command to print to screen. And using the um, at symbol here, I am switching the echo for all the script. We're gonna see later what, what happens if you switch it on or off. So right now let's do it off and let's see what happens later. Also, let's say that we want to write some kind of intro, some kind of comment. Uh, it's always useful to do that. That can be done with RAM. RAM and after RAM, everything that you write, so please, comments in Windows command prompt uh, script files should be on a new line always. Otherwise, you can have messed up behaviors. So this is how the interpreter, interpreter works line by line. So if a line is a line of code, there should be no comment. If you want to write a comment, start a new line. And here we can simply write, uh, this is an example script for our session. Um, and then, let's try out a for loop. For percent symbol, percent symbol, x, variable name, in parentheses, open and closed, and then inside the parentheses, a list of numbers in this case, one, two, three, do equal the variable x. And then let's use the function pose. Okay, so let's save it. Notice that you have an asterisk here in the upper left corner if you haven't saved the file. So save it and then you can keep the, the file open. We can go back to the common prompt and we can ask for session script 01.common. And we have, I'm gonna put it side by side. So what we ask is for x in the list of numbers one to three do 
echo the variable. So echo is the print to screen function. And what we get is exactly one, two, three. And then the function pose here is what gives you the, uh, the pose, the uh, press um, a key to continue. We're gonna do that. You can press any key and we get back to the uh, prompt. So now, um, I lost my file. There you go. Let's close it. And let's navigate to this line of code and let's create a second script. Zero two. Let's say again, echo off. I'm not gonna write a comment right now, but you can if you want, again with rem. And let's try for slash L variable X remember with a percent sign before, the two percent signs are there to tell the Windows command prompt that X is a temporary local variable of the for loop. In, so now the option L of the for loop stands for list, meaning uh, that what you're providing in the parentheses are the initial value, the increment, and the final value. And Windows is gonna open up, the Windows command prompt is gonna open up this list, is gonna calculate all the values inside this list, and then it's gonna iterate inside the list. Let's try out an example. Let's say that the initial value is one, the final value is 50, and we go five by five. And let's say do equal the variable x again. Now, notice maybe I haven't stressed this enough. Do the do command here identifies the start of your code, of the, 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 the start of the for loop body, the commands that are going to be executed at, at each iteration of the loop. And again, let's ask for a pause after the execution. We go back to the command prompt. I navigate to the previous line. I am a lazy typer. I write ses session script 02.common. And as you can see, I get 1, 5, 11, 16, 21. So starting at 1, going up to 50 in steps of 5. So 1 plus 5, 6, 6 plus 5, 11, and so on and so forth. And then the pose comment. Now let's let's write echo on. So this is again session script zero two. We write echo on and we run it again. And now what we get is so i'm gonna help me out with with the zoom annotate options so this is the line where we run our script so here it starts here you get the line of code that is going to be executed so this is actually the content of our file and then at each iteration you get the function, the code that is executed at each iteration. So at iter in iteration one, you have echo of one, output one. 
iteration two, you get equal of six, iteration six. At iteration uh, three, you get equal of 11, output 11, and so on and so forth. So what, what does the equal option at the beginning of the script do? It prevents the Windows command prompt from printing out the code that you write in the command file itself. Uh, it, can, it can have advantages. Mm, so just be aware that you can switch it on and off. The default behavior, if you do not write anything, we can try. If you just write the for loop, then you run the, function, the script here. The default behavior is actually with equal on. So it's probably good to usually, like as a rule of thumb, write equal off, and then if you need, you can change it to on if you need to check the code, what, what, what's executed. Now, let's see a further example. Let's create a new script, session script 03. Again, equal. And now, let's ask for y in dot in the current folder. Do equal. Y and then pause. Let's save it and let's run it and then we'll we'll comment on it later. So let's run this session script 03. We got nothing. Ah oh, that's my bad. Sorry. I forgot what we should write is current folder slash wildcard asterisk. So everything that is inside the current folder. So correctly right now, the common prompt was listing only, as you can see here, was listing only one dot, the current folder. Let's run it again. There you go. So what we have written here is for every entry in the content of the current folder print out the file names and this works for files now what if let's modify this um, session script free we want to actually what we want to do is to gather the content of these files and save everything to a single file we can do the pipe, the output to file pipe. And we can write, uh, we can call the file all files.txt. And let's save it. So here we need to press once. What, what happened here, I modified the file before closing its, its execution. So I'm getting an error, but it's actually not important right now because uh, we wanted to exit the, the function. Let's run it again. We don't have any output except the one from pose. But if we ask for a directory listing, we should be able to see the all files.txt and if we open it up, no, oh, sorry, notepad, all files.txt, we get our list of files. We can actually improve on that, for example, how can we access the content of the file from the common prompt? There are two comments. One is type 
all files.txt. And the second one is more all files.txt. Now, you cannot see the difference right now, but what, what we can do is um, we can, for example, say, let's ask for the help of the for command, so for slash question mark, and then pipe, uh, pipe, uh, output to file pipe, and we call for manual entry dot txt. And then we ask for type, so we can actually navigate to the previous line to the history and ask for type for manual entry. And as you can see, we get everything written to the common prompt all the content of the file. If instead we use the more command, we get part by part. The content of the file is printed to screen, but only up to the point, up to the end of the screen. So the part of the content that can fit in the current screen. And then you can just uh, press enter and scroll down. So you can, now I'm scrolling down to exit the content of this file. And once you reach 100%, you get back to the common prompt. And you can, for example, use these two comments, type in particular, for example, to uh, access the content of a group of files inside a folder and save them to the same file, for example. This is a very simple application, but very useful at times with four loops. Now, let's Let's see a further example. Let's see a further example. I hope I can show you two more examples. So let's create ses session script 04, notepad session script 04 dot common. And now let's write again echo off. And now we can actually create variables in a common prompt, uh, in a common script file. And that's done with set. Now, set is a very powerful function. It actually allows you to modify, to list, access, and modify the environment variable of uh, Windows. But you can also use it in. Uh, command script to create variables. A very important caveat is um, do not use the same name for your variables as environment variables. That's very important. How can you check the name of your environment variables? You can just write set here on the command prompt. I suggest you do that. I just run the help. I suggest you do that I will not run it so my environment variables don't get recorded. It's just a safety measure. But if you run uh, the help, you're gonna get a description of this behavior. So I suggest you try it out. Let's get back to the script. So let's say set um, option A, which stands for numeric value and let's create a variable check equal 10. Pay attention that you should not leave a blank space here. Neither 
neither between the variable name and the equal sign, nor between the equal sign and the variable value. Uh, that will create problems in the execution. So no blank space. Set option A, check equal 10. Then for option L, list x in uh, 1, 2, 50. Um, do. Do what? We want to print out the values that are smaller than 15. How can we do that? By using an if, uh, if, else, if, then, else structure. And the syntax is the following. If x lss less than check and please notice the different syntax so this is how we call the variable x of the for loop this is how we call a variable created with the set function so we created check with set and we call it with percent sign variable name percent sign um, do equal x else equal um, this value is above check. Notice that I do not use any quotation mark, any apostrophe, nothing to distinguish the stream because Windows works natively with strings and more importantly, with blank spaces in the strings, which is something that the best shell doesn't have. And let's close our script with a pose. Now let's say, let's go back to the command prompt and let's execute our script. And let's examine the um, output. Five minutes. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. So uh, now I wanted to print out the values that are smaller than check, so smaller than 10. And that's what we get. One, three, five, seven, nine. And then the rest, we get the output. The value is above check. Now let's write our final script. This is gonna be session script five. So notepad, session script five. Now let's bring it back here again. Equal off. And now let's create a function. How do we create a function? Now, I suggest you can leave a blank line and then we can start our function. So function name, function definition are gonna be written at the end of your script file. And they start with a column. Uh, we can call the function list files. And the function does the following. It creates the variable files list, which is equal to the first input variable. So this is the syntax for the input variable to the function. Percent sign, tilde, number, position number. So this is the first input of the function. Or y in files list. Notice that here we use the syntax for variables created with the set uh, function. Do echo uh, y. So this is a small function that encapsulates the code that we wrote before and we need to close it with the command exit 
exit B0. The option B is telling the exit function that we are closing a function written in a common script, that we are not closing the prompt, but just a function. And zero is the exit code. Zero is typically the everything is right exit code. And now here in the line that we left, we can actually call the function. And to do that, we use the function call. So call the file name, so list files with a colon here. And then our input um, input value. The input value is gonna be C users. Look at the so the home folder of the common prompt. So drive users your username. And I forgot a piece of the my function. Notice that here I need to add the wildcard, otherwise I don't get a file list. And notice that here strings are joined together without any operator. You can just the input uh, the input variable is a string, and you can just write slash wildcard, and Windows is gonna concatenate to join the two strings together. So let's see if it works. Let's go back to the common prompt and let's run our session script five uh, function. And we get the list of all the files inside the C users look at the um, folder. If we want to compare it, we can actually ask CD, uh, sorry, we can ask dear C users, look at this. Uh, well, what we can do is, we can say CD, very last thing. I hope it's not too much for the last minute. Here, for example, we need to run two commands cd and then dir we can concatenate them with the double ampersand so the double end this is the logical end run cd double dot go to the parent folder and then if the first command is successful list the files and if you want, you can check the two outputs, but the files are gonna be the same. And it's 9.30, I'm gonna close here. I'm gonna ask you to, here's the uh, pad. I'm gonna ask you if you would like to answer the uh, free closing questions. Uh, you can just put the plus or minus, plus for yes, minus for no. If you would want to leave a comment, feel free. Thank you for listening and following. Thank you, Luca. That was fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you, thank you, everyone. Uh, Kevin had to leave uh, earlier, uh, just uh, one minute ago, so he's seen almost all of it. Uh, I try to put uh, type in all the commands in the etherpad, so you should be able to use it as a reference uh, afterwards. Um, I won't would like to ask you to fill in the uh, so fill in the questions from Luca at the bottom of the interpart, but also on the line. Let me find this. Mm. Yeah, on the line thirty-four, there is a feedback survey. Um, this is the survey from the carpentries. It's very important that you fill it in. So please uh, take a moment after we finish the session. Um, and that with that, I don't know, look up, maybe you can, you want to take a few questions? I think we can yeah, stretch yeah, it yeah, a little bit. Are. Yeah, sure. If there are any questions, yeah. You can unmute yourself uh, and ask questions if you want. Otherwise you can, uh, yeah, if there's silence, <laughs> then we, uh, we finish, I guess. No, I don't have any questions. Thank you very much. I actually learned quite a bit. That's great. Thank you for being here.
Yeah, same for me. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It's good to see some stuff in, in the Windows prompts. And that's great. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm stopping the recording now also.